Hello, I'm Greg from Photo and Video, and it's my turn to make a new video for the website. This one testing the latest Fuji travel camera. It's called the FinePix F70, and it's a new release. We've had them in store a week or so, We've got some customers with them already. Fuji should have built this camera about four years ago. They've left this market to Panasonic and Canon. But this new model has a number of key features that we think will make it a winner for the next year or so while it's a current camera. These include an amazingly slim body. This camera is only 22.7mm thick. Makes it thinner than the Panasonic TZ7 and the Canon SX200, which are both its rivals in this category. It has a 10x zoom rather than a 12x zoom. Zooms from 27mm equivalent through to 270 which we think is an excellent range for travel. And people might forego that last little bit of zoom to get the really skinny body. From a quality point of view, one of the things that we think Fuji has done, which is very clever on this model, is that they've incorporated their new EXR Super CCD. The previous cameras, the F40, F50, F60 cameras that had this chip, all showed a significant improvement in quality over the conventional CCD cameras. So we think in terms of performance and low light, and sharpness and accuracy of colour, this camera is going to be a winner. This probably is going to be more evident when you want to print your photographs as opposed to just having them um, on your computer screen, but for the person who wants a beautiful printed end result from their travel camera, this camera is definitely going to be worth a look. The camera, in terms of ordinary specs, the things you expect to hear about, uh, is 10 million pixels. It has a 2.7 inch LCD screen, which is a nice size. Um, it has an amazing macro mode, and it has all the same number of custom modes, the night portrait, long scene, that sort of thing that you would expect to find in a camera nowadays. The key things are that the exposure and focus system are very accurate. It doesn't get tricked by backlight. It's um, the little processor that decides the image you're finally going to get works very well. Fuji lay claim to a, a maximum ISO on this camera of 12,800. I don't imagine that would be that usable, but even at an ISO of 3200 or 1600, it will still make it a fantastic camera for taking photographs in low light and large buildings when you're away, night scenes, lots of things where the lights are challenged when you're travelling. Handling-wise, I think Fuji is showing the benefits of this camera being the end of a long um, line of successful F-series cameras. The camera has excellent features in terms of um, an easy function for changing the resolution if you want to change it down to eBay or email resolution quickly. It has the exposure compensation, film simulation, a lot of functions that you might want to use that are very easily accessed and in a menu that you don't need to keep resorting back to the instruction book to, to, to check on. If you want to have a look at the um, camera, I don't have it, the Panasonic here, but this is the width of the body of the camera, so easily pocketable. As I said, 22.7mm, so a full 10mm or 1cm narrower than the equivalent Canon camera in this range. I think that this will be more than enough for people to forego that extra little bit of zoom and consider this camera as a travel camera. One area where the specifications would suggest this camera might be behind its competitors is the quality of the video that it shoots. I've just viewed some video just plugged through the AV cables into a standard 42 inch plasma television and it's perfectly watchable. Certainly not high def, and perhaps this is a, one area where it may be behind the Panasonic TZ7 and the Canon SX200. I personally, I personally treat the video as a bonus because I buy a still camera for the quality of the printed results. The video function is there and it's nice to have, but perhaps I have the advantage of having a video camera as well. I think the video on this is perfectly acceptable for a still camera. In conclusion, I think if I was travelling, I'd seriously consider this camera. If I had the budget, I'd still buy a Panasonic TZ7. It has 25mm at the wide angle end, and I quite like that extra little bit of width. It also has high def video. But if those features aren't critical to you, this camera certainly is smaller, it's less expensive, and it gives an excellent accuracy in terms of the colour and the result, as I've said. If those anybody's interested, we've also filmed this on Canon's new HF100 SD video camera. Beautiful little camera, and I've managed to do this whole thing without reading an instruction book, which is very unusual for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.